Hey, welcome back to my channel. So, I wanted to show for some of the American viewers that may not know this, uh, in Canada, particularly Western Canada and part of East, but particularly in the West, a real popular trailer choice for flatbed is called a Super B. And it's a Super B flatbed. So you've got, this is obviously a nice Peterbilt here, and then we've got the front trailer. Let's see if my finger can point here. The front trailer is 32 feet length. The back trailer, uh, the back trailer is 28 foot. So you got a 32 and a 28, that's a Super B. And so we got the front axle that allows, and I'll get it converted, uh, I'll put it on the screen, but the front axle, the single axle, allows 9,100 kg. And then the tandem, the drives, you got 17,000 kg. And then the tritum, uh, for most, depending on the spacing, but most it's 24,000 kg. Some, depending on the spacing, you can only get 21,000. And then the rear, uh, tandems you get 17,000 so uh, so you got 50, 91 17,000 24,000 and uh, the 17,000 so the total the typical gross like here's a load of lumber this is what it's commonly used for uh, you'll use super bees for lumber shingles uh, heavy loads because this gross is 90 the payload that uh, shippers can haul when they're shipping this is 90,000 pounds so this is a Super V trailer that you'd find in Alberta. And if you look here, uh, I've got, there's one here, two, and there's a third one parked over there. And we're gonna move, we're gonna move over real quick. And here's an example of another Super V, but it's tarped. So it's same Super V, but it's fully tarped. So just wanted to kind of show a quick view of what it's like to be a uh, Super V in Alberta and BC, you'll see them often. And uh, again, this setting here is typically 24,000, but depending on the axle spacing, uh, you may only get 21. And also the width of the tires can be a factor that would affect the overall gross on there, so. I wanted to mention about uh, Super Bs, just like any other multi-axle trailer, one of the biggest challenges, just like a lot of drivers are going through is cost of maintenance and repair so obviously with super bees the biggest thing is tires because you've got four eight twelve sixteen twenty tires just on the trailers and then obviously you're gonna have more straps because you've got 60 feet of deck space to work with so you got more straps to deal with uh, double the tarps so a lot more cost and uh, costs uh, in the operation of running a Super B, um, and also your insurance would obviously be a little higher depending on what you're hauling. So. Additional side note about the Super Bs and increased cost ties into truck parking as a whole in Alberta. There is a significant problem in Alberta, BC, um, a lot of parts, uh, maybe even in, uh, definitely in Toronto area, uh, is truck parking. You know, when you're a small carrier, one truck operator, or you own five trucks, three or four, just not, you're not a big carrier. And if you're doing regional runs where you're gone, you know, three, four days at a time, and you're having to pay hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars a month as a carrier to have truck parking, you know, it adds a significant amount to your your uh, operations, right? Because if you have five trucks and you need to pay several thousand dollars to have spots for your drivers there, that's a huge hit. Um, now, if you're a short haul driver where you're just doing day trips where you're always parking your trucks every night, then you kind of, you know, you need that. So you have that guaranteed spot. But I can, I can appreciate the challenge for a lot of the drivers out there um, just because a lot of the little areas you go to, like around... In my area the trucks the truck parking my area there's a couple decent size but the rest of them there's like literally five five spots for drivers and there's a there's another one that's a pretty big lot it's paid for only you ha every st stop there stall there you have to pay for it's privately run so i can appreciate that challenge so the you know it, what's frustrating i guess in the trucking industry is that carriers pay ifta they have to file ifta every quarter the international federation um fuel tax so the, the governments know um, how many trucks are driving, are driving through their our province or state, right? Each quarter, 
they know how many miles were driven by commercial carriers by the if the filings and then if you were to say just a logical analogy how many miles are being driven there could be a survey done how many truck parking stalls are available versus how much are being utilized and then to help gauge the necessity of extra parking in different areas in different cities um, you know the Canadian truck stops are far far less superior than the American ones by far if you talk to any Canadian driver that goes to the US they love the parking stall they, especially in the west uh, the western US states they love the the, the truck stops there because lots of room lots of lots of parking stalls obviously the northeast US everyone knows it's a challenge it's tight it's 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 busy um, but in Canada there's a few spots they're not saying that we have all bad but overall from my experience in my travels is the spot, spots I've seen are not the greatest and there's rest stops along highways and I've stopped at them and it's an, literally just an outhouse. Um, it's contracted out, they're not well looked after. So um, in terms of you know the drivers, and we talk about pay and rates, but you know the sacrifice drivers do make, especially those that are doing the longer hauls where they're gone for several days in a row, um, it is thankless. It, you know, even though we you know we talk about this, but I do make an effort as a broker after my loads to tell the dispatcher to please thank the driver for a great job. I take that time in. So if you know a driver, you come across one, thank one, thank them, because it can be a. I understand it can be lonely, it can be tough, and they're doing the job, working weekends, running night times. Um, you know, and there's no in a lot of cases there's not a lot of extra pay. Um, super bees get paid a little bit more than a flatbed because obviously there's more space, more weight that you're hauling. Let's say a load that would pay a flatbed, because I'm used to doing this, if it's paying the flatbed $25, $2,800, the Super B would get between $36 to $4,000. So about $1,800, between $800 and $1,200 more on the Super B than the flatbed. And in some cases, it's not that much, especially if it's a backhaul. So, and you know, and they're you know, you're dealing with a 60 foot trailer plus your your semi. So, uh, as far as you know, the the frustrations in the trucking industry, they're they're there um, for sure in a lot of areas. So, the v purpose of the video today was really to address to show a unique trailer. And as I was doing that, uh, I dealt I seen this. You know, here's here's this. I met the driver. The the video of those flatbeds, the Super Bs that I showed you. I met the owner outside. I got his permission to use his trailers. It turns out that the three trailers there were all his. And then the one I showed you with the tarp was his brother's. And as I was filming, and a fellow from the truck stop came out and says, hey, was that your, is this your truck? And I'm like, I explained, no, I got permission to, to video it. And he says, yeah, they've been parking here for the last few weekends in a row and, and we can't allow that. And that's just frustrating. You know, um, I mean, if there was a, you know, how many other carriers are, I guess, trying to take that spot, but the three of them were actually parked on the service road adjacent to it. So they weren't even inside the, the truck stop parking lot. So I'm not sure if the truck stop has the jurisdiction to, to do that. But the one Super B that was parked inside, I guess, if they've been seeing it too often, I'm not sure the rules there. But uh, the po whole point of this little end rant here is that I can appreciate the challenges um, and just no different than shippers, right? I mean, I try to, you know, we've got a promoter. We need without the shippers, we don't have the freight, and you know, without the freight, then there's no, you know, there's no business, right? But the the point is, is that like some shippers, if you have, if you're a shipping facility where your loading times are not one hour, two hours, if you if you generally take three, four hours to load your trucks because of the nature of your the the goods that you're shipping, um, and you know this, then it would be only appropriate that create a driver's lounge have a spot where the drivers can go for a safe haven clean washrooms nice chairs to sit in and put vending machines at least the drivers can buy a coffee buy a beverage get a healthy snack of some sort um, so that if they're there for four hours yes they may have to sit in the truck but they can get out stretch their legs and and so forth and have a spot they can bring their laptop or tablet maybe get some work done get some books caught up or whatever or work, search the load boards for your next load in a different environment outside of the truck since you're there for that period of time so i realize it's no there's no perfect solution but you know i just think that we need to kind of be aware of these challenges so that when we see drivers like if you're watching, watching this, this that, that you know i'm, I'm thankful, thankful for this for what they do and the sacrifices especially you know if you're doing the overnight 
multiple nights in a row and you're gone out of your home, you're not seeing your family, you're sacrificing your job to be away from your friends and family. So, um, and I recognize that it can be thankless, especially in Canada, we got six months of winter, it can be cold, um, we get, you know, very, very cold temperatures. Um, so the winter can, the six months can sure feel a lot longer when we have cold spells. So thank the, I thank you to the drivers that for the time and effort that you put into this industry and taking that time away from your family. So hopefully you got something unique to see a different type of trailer and sorry for the rant but it just kind of I wasn't planning on that I was just going to show the video of the trailer but as I drove around I, I'm seeing things and I just kind of that's my uh, what I'm seeing from this side of the desk.